Moving on to number, well, section 3, number 41. Number 41 states the table below shows the number of books borrowed by students from the school's library in a week. So they have the table there. And they said three fifths of the two of the students borrowed three books or more. How many students did not borrow any books? So three or more will state. So three. So total for three or more is equal to three is sixty three plus four more which is eighty one. So sixty three plus eighty one is one hundred and forty four. So you know now a total of one hundred and forty four students borrowed three or more books. They said three fifths of the students borrow three. So we know now the fraction three fifths is equal to 144. What we can do here now is find the total. So total is equal to the quantity given, which is 144, multiplied by the inverse of the fraction, which is 5 over 3. And you will get 240. Get 240 students who borrow books from the school library. So we need to calculate now how many students did not borrow any books. So we want to calculate now the number of students who did not borrow any books. And to calculate the number of students who did not borrow any books from the total, which is 240 students, which we just found, you will take away the amount that is known, which is equal to 34 plus 36 plus 63 plus 81. And this will be 240, take away 214, and you will get 26. So the answer is... 26. This is 4 marks, you will get 1 mark for calculating the current answer. 1 mark for getting this here. 1 mark for getting the total. 1 mark for finding out this figure here. Number 42. Good. Number 42. Gary works 40 hours from Monday to Friday and is paid $60 per hour. He works twice the number of hours on Saturday than on Sunday. He is paid time and a half on both dates. How many hours does Gary work on a Saturday if he earns $3,480 in one week? So first we need to calculate what is the total regular time amount. We know one hour regular time is $60 and the hours um, total hours regular time is 40 hours. So total amount and regular time amount of money you will make it is the 40 hours multiply by the amount for one hour which is $60. So 40 multiplied by 60 and you will get 2,400 hours. So he is paid 2,400 dollars regular time. Now we need to calculate what is the total for Saturday and Sunday. Because you know now, when you add up the amount from Monday to Friday, Saturday and Sunday, you get a total of $3,480. So to calculate now the total for Saturday and Sunday, from the total which is $3,480, you're taking away 
$2,400. And we'll end up with $1,080. So you know now, on both Saturday and Sunday, when you add up the total, you'll get $1,080. Now they said he works twice the number of hours on Saturday than on Sunday. So what we have here is simple unequal sharing. We have Saturday. We have Sunday. Sunday we know he works for some unknown amount and we know Saturday he works for two times that amount. So you know now when you take Saturday and you add the Sunday amount you get a total of $1,080 so 2x plus x will be 3x is equal to 1,080 x is equal to 1,080 divided by 3 and you will get $360 we represent x that's the calculate how much he wait is how many hours this guy will on Saturday. So to calculate the total earned on Saturday, which is equal to 2 multiplied by 360, which is equal to 720. So you know now he earns a total of $720 on Saturday. He, they said now he is paid time and a half on both days. So what we need to do now is to calculate now how much he is paid per hour per day. So paid per hour on weekends will be time and a half is equal to one and one half multiplied by the amount you get for one hour regular time which was $60. So one and one half multiplied by sixty dollars will give you ninety dollars. So he is paid ninety dollars for one hour working on the weekends. You know now he earned a total of seven hundred and twenty dollars. So to calculate the number of hours worth on Saturday. They take the total which he worked for, which is on Saturday, which is $720, and divided by the amount for one hour, which is $90, and the answer we'll get is $8. 90 by 8 is what? So it's 8 hours he worked for on Saturday. So, one mark for getting the 8 hours. One mark for calculating the total earned on Saturday. One mark for calculating the remaining amount. And one mark for calculating the total for one hour. Number 43. Number 43 states the parameters of the rectangle and the square below are the same. The length of the rectangle is twice its width. Now, if you calculate what is the difference between the area of the square and the rectangle. Hmm. Before we can do anything, we need to find out what are the dimensions of the rectangle. So first, we need to find out what is the perimeter of the rectangle. And to calculate, since you know the perimeter of the square is equal to the perimeter of the rectangle, we can, when we find the perimeter of the square, we will know what the perimeter of the rectangle is. So the perimeter of the rectangle is equal to the perimeter of the square. So to calculate the perimeter of the rectangle, which is equal to the perimeter of the square, the perimeter of the square is equal to side, add side, add side, add side, or it is side multiplied by 4. So 
which is equal to 9 centimeters multiplied by 4. 9 fourths are 36 so centimeters. So you know the parameter of the rectangle is equal to 36 centimeters. The told you here now that the length of the rectangle is twice its width. So again, unequal sharing. So we have the length and we have the width. The width is some unknown value and the length is two times that amount. Good. So you know now Good, so continuing here now, we know that the total length is the 2x and the total width is represented by x. So, we know when you add 2x plus x, it's supposed to get the parameter which is 36 centimeters. Because you know when you add length plus width plus length plus width, it's supposed to get the parameter. So this here represents the parameter. 3x is equal to 36 centimeters. So to calculate what x is, it is 36 centimeters divided by 3, and I will get 12 centimeters. So x here now represents the width, the total width. So the total width is equal to 12 centimeters. So the rectangle is like this we have the lengths and we have the widths. So the, the width, the, the, the total for here and here is equal to 12 centimeters. So one width is equal to 12 centimeters divided by two, which is equal to six centimeters. So you know one of the widths is equal to six centimeters. Now you need to calculate what is the total length. is equal to 2x which is equal to 2 multiplied by whatever the value of x was which is here in our case is 12 centimeters so 12 multiplied by 2 is 24 centimeters so one length is equal to 24 cm divided by 2 which is equal to 12 centimeters so you know one of the lengths is 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters. So you know now when I add 12 add 6 add 12 add 6 you'll get 36 centimeters. Okay so now to ask you what is the difference between the area of the square and the rectangle. Now we need to calculate what the area of the square is. Area of square is equal to side multiplied by side which is equal to 9 cm multiplied by 9 cm 9 nines are 81 centimeters squared. Always remember, area is in square units. And we need to calculate now the area of the rectangle. Area of rectangle is equal to length multiplied by the width. The length here is, we found out to be 12 centimeters. And the width we found out to be 6 centimeters. 12 multiplied by 6 is equal to 72 centimeters squared. Difference means to take away, which is equal to 81 centimeters squared. Take away 72 centimeters squared, and you will get 9 centimeters squared. So, you'll get one mark, the only correct answer. One mark for final order this here. One mark for calculating the length and the width, and one mark for calculating figuring out the relationship between the rectangle parameter of rectangle and parameter of the square. Number forty-four states the grid shows two complete shapes A and B, and an incomplete shape C. Draw the line of symmetry that is common to shapes A and B. So the line of symmetry will be this dotted line going straight across here through 
the center here, all right, because this is looking like an isosceles triangle, and run all the way from here. Now, the set part B shape, shapes A and C also have a common line of symmetry. So this shape here now, all these sides are equal. So therefore, for this to have a line of symmetry, the, the line of symmetry needs to run like this. Therefore, this here now, to complete it, you need to flip on the line of symmetry here. So that's why the shape will look like this. The same image button flipped on the line of symmetry here to complete the shape. Alright. Number 45 states. The bar graph shows the number of runs scored by a school in a cricket competition with four innings. So, number of runs scored, innings, okay. the mean number of runs scored before the four innings was five less than the mean number of runs scored after the fourth innings. How many runs were scored in the four innings? Good. Number 45. So, they said that the mean of the first three innings, because they said the, the number of runs scored before the field. Good. So, the mean number of runs scored before the fourth innings is five less than the mean number of runs scored on the fourth innings. So, that means the mean of the first three innings will be five less than what it is when the fourth. So, what we need to do is to calculate what the mean is. For the first three. So we need to calculate first, before we can calculate the mean, we need to calculate the total. So total for first three innings is equal to 80 plus 40 plus 60 and that will give you 180. The mean of first three innings is equal to the 180 divided by 3 because it's three innings and therefore it will be 60. So the mean of the first three innings is 60. They told you that the, in the mean number of runs scored before the fourth innings was five less than the mean. So therefore, if it is five less here, that means when you add on the four innings, it will be four, um, five more. So the mean for four innings will equal to the 60 plus the five extra um, runs or scores, and you'll get a mean of 65. So the mean of the four innings now will be 65. That's how much runs were scored in the fourth innings. But we do not know how much the total is. So whenever you have the unknown, always remember you need to find the total. So good. So we need to calculate now the total for the four innings. We know the mean and we know the number of innings. So to calculate the total, it is equal to the mean, which is 65, multiplied by the total number of innings, which is 4. And 65 multiplied by 4 is equal to 260. So you now you know you need a total of 260 runs. You want to calculate the number of runs in the fourth innings. Number, yes, get the number of runs in fourth innings. It will be equal to the no total number of runs for the four innings, which is 260. Take away the total number of runs for the first three innings, which is 180. So 260 take away 180 is equal to 80 runs. So in the fourth innings, the person scored 80 runs. The marks are awarded. We'll get one mark for this here. One mark for the total. One mark for this. One mark for this.